Blessings, blessings. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in, come on in. Good afternoon. Hey, Lenique, how are you? Blessings. Come on in and share the broadcast. Let's go into a word of prayer. I want to make this as quick as possible. I want to get to this as quick as possible. Hello, Kim. Winter Haven for in Florida. Blessings to you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you for coming on in. Hey, Latanya, how are you doing? Blessings. Come on in quickly. Share the broadcast. Let's do this as quick as possible. Uh, come on in. Share the broadcast. Once you've shared the broadcast, type share. Hey, Crystal, how are you? Once you've shared the broadcast, type share. At the bottom of the screen please come on in share come on in and share you know how we do this blessings blessings so good to see all of you in the land of the living come on in share the broadcast once you've shared the broadcast type share to the bottom of the screen thank you so much type share in the comment section Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor that is due unto your name. Father, I pray today that as we come on in on Facebook Live, Father God, that you will have your way, that you will speak to your people, Father God, like never yet before, that you will open up the ears of our understanding, that you will open up our hearts, Father God, that we may be able to comprehend that which the Holy Spirit is speaking unto us today. And so, Father, we say today, we give you free recourse, free reign. Have your way. Let your will be done, Father God. Speak to the hearts of your people. Every stony heart, Father God, we pray that you will turn it, O oh God, to a heart of flesh. That your people, Father God, will be receptive to your word. I pray today, Father God, that your people will become hearers of, will become doers of your word and not just hearers of your word. That they will hear every word and they will in turn practice it, put it into practice in their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against every evil plot, plan, scheme of the enemy to sidetrack this broadcast now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, have your way. Let your will be done. I cover each and every person that is on this live feed, each and every person that will come on and be a part of this live feed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Blessings to all of you. And so today I wanted to talk to you about filthy authors and filthy pulpits. Yes, I understand the topic. <laughs> and a lot of people will be like, what in the world? Blessings to all of you. Come on and share the broadcast. Once you share the broadcast, go ahead, type share or in the comment section. And so today I want to talk about um, filthy altars. I want to talk about um, filthy pulpits. Because um, for a while now, I keep on getting emails and I keep on getting messages of people all around the world that are messaging me and saying, woman of God, I attend this church or I go to this place and I go to this place and this is what I see and this is what I, you know, um, um, what's happening there. And, 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 and they, they are saying that the Holy Spirit is telling them and showing them these things, showing them dreams and vision, but yet they're still there. And so I, I just had to come on and after reading one email today, I had to come on in to do this video um, because I feel like so many persons, the reason why you are struggling, the reason why you cannot make it, the reason why you're sick in your body is based on what it is that you accept and what it is that you come in covenant with. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. What you come in covenant with. Based on what you come in covenant with or what you so-called sit under is basically what will be activated in your life. And many people, they hear this, but they refuse to accept this. They refuse to accept it. Hence the reason why you're sitting up in this place and you're dying of cancer, hypertension, blood disease, or, 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 all kinds of things, heart problems. But you're sitting in a church with a pastor. And so, people of God, please, please, please do not carry this message the wrong way. Don't share this with your pastor to say, oh, um, Prophetess Mabe is on Facebook again, uh, bashing the pastors. No, but you got to understand these are the last days and God said that he will pour out his spirit and he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. So, I don't need to have a caller or be up in a pulpit to bring this message. And no, I am not bashing pastors. But when the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you, 
and show you some things you need to be able to move when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And that is the problem now. Many people that say that they are saved and that they are Christians, been saved for 15, 20, 25 years, and they say the Holy Spirit is showing them things and speaking to them. But when the Holy Spirit and when God is telling you to move, when Yahweh is telling you to move, you refuse to move and then you wonder why you're dying. You wonder why you broke. And so today, I want to take you to a very familiar scripture. And for the past year or two, you should become very accustomed with this scripture. It is taken from 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to um, 4. Verses 3 to 4. And, and, and 2 Timothy 4 um, chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after the, but they, but, but their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers and having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Amen. There's another one that I want to take you to. Let me go ahead and see if I can find it. I didn't put it up, but let me see if I can find it. This other scripture should also be um, in, in, in Timothy also. It's coming from, uh, I believe it's 1 Timothy 4 and 1. And it says, the spirit clearly says that in the latter days, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and, and, and things taught by demons. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1. The spirit clearly says that in the latter days, in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and and things taught by demons. I want to look for this in the uh, King James Version. I, got, I just got to get this to you today. I really got to get this to you today. Now the Spirit speak it expressly that in the latter times, some shall uh, depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Number two, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. I can't even pronounce the word. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen. And I want to read these scriptures in your hearing because I need you to understand what it is that I am trying to say to you today. Uh, and I really wanted to read these scriptures for you today because I wanted you to understand what it is that um, um, I'm saying to you today for you to, to get a better picture of what it is that I'm saying to you. Like I said, First Timothy 4. Um, um, and I want to read that one more time. Now the Spirit speaketh, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. Speaking hypocrisy. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience said with a hot iron. You know what that is for your conscience to be said with a hot iron? That means you've been branded in that way and nothing in the world can change your mind from what it is that you are thinking about or what you intend to do. And so I wanted to bring this scripture to you today along with the scripture in also in 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. And it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but go after their own lust." 
shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. People of God, what I want to say to you today is we need to get to the point where we stop our, our relying on people to introduce us to God. Where we need to stop relying on people to literally take us to God. Where we have to come to the point now where we rely on the Holy Spirit. Where we don't just rely on somebody else's experience, on what somebody else is, is teaching you, or their false doctrine that they are, you know, um, 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 indoctrinated, in, in, um, indoctrinated you um, with. Come on, you got to step out of this box. And like I said, I've been receiving emails. I've been receiving um, WhatsApp messages. I've been receiving um, messengers um, from people that are saying to me, woman of God, I'm a part of this church. I'm a part of this organization, but yet I'm seeing some things happening. I went and I spoke to my pastor. It's either the pastor start having an attitude or it's the pastor tell them, oh, they will do something about it and never do anything about it. Or the pastor begin to preach about it on the pulpit, call them out and preach it on the pulpit. Or the pastor sees what's going on and never does anything anything about it. Good evening, Minister Kevin. How are you? Minister Keith, how are you? And so this is, this is something that is so um, um, important. I really wanted to come on in and deal with this situation today because it's going on every day in the body of Christ. A lot of you, you're going to church tomorrow and you're going to be doing the same rituals, the same uh, traditions that you've been doing for 15, 20, 25 years, 30 years. And, 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 and guess what? There is absolutely no change in the body of Christ. No change. Everyone still have the same stink attitude. Everybody's still sweet hatting. Everybody's still committing adultery. Fornicators, they still being adulterous. They still worshiping false idols. They still lying and gossiping. Man, they gossiping about the pastor. What you think about you, the member? And then you have shepherds that are supposed to be shepherds that are now, you, they literally arguing with you over the pulpit. And then the thing what really kills me is a man of God or supposed to be a man of God or woman of God telling you from the pulpit, listen, if you don't agree with what my two, I'm teaching my false doctrine, if you don't agree with what I'm teaching here and what's going on here in this ministry, you can hit the road, Jack. You can get out of my church. What church? Not understanding that God called you to be a servant because you're an apostle, because you're an pastor, because you're a teacher, because you're a prophet, because you're a pastor. That does not mean that you lord over God's people. And that is what's been happening. A lot of people, they've been lord, they, they lord over God's people, over Yahweh's people. They are manipulating the people. They tell you crap like, oh, you can't go and you can't leave this church. And if you leave this church, you'll never be able to make it. You'll never be able to fruitful. Oh, don't come and tell them that you're about to start ministry. Don't tell them that you believe that, the whole, but that, that, that Yahweh is calling you to go into your own ministry. Woo! They start to, 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 to send all kind of um, um, curses at you, at your children, at your finances, your business. Man, some of them, they even tell you to your face, everything in your life will dry up if you leave this church. The devil is a liar. People of God, come on, we need to wake up. It's time to wake up. I, I got up I got up just a few minutes ago because I'm not feeling too well. And I got up a few a few minutes ago and, and, and I was reading a message. And man, I, I was like, come on, man. How is it that a pastor, you seeing some things happening in the church? This person coming and preaching in the church, but God then show you in a vision that this person is not of him. But yet your pastor is inviting this person to come and speak at the church. And guess what? You already seen God already show you that this person is not of him. But yet you still go into the revival. You still go into the conference. You still go into the church. And you sit underneath that. And then you want to sit up in there with your hands crossed and say, Oh, I don't believe in anything that they say. Oh, this person is a witch. Oh, this person wicked. Oh, but you sitting there. 
The mere fact that you sitting there, the mere fact that you walk through those doors, the mere fact that you're a member there, the mere fact that you still go into this organization means that you coming into agreement with whatever is going on in that establishment. That's what people don't understand. You already come into agreement with this foolishness. I saw a flyer the other day with somebody who I know for fuck is a witch. I ain't got to ask nobody. The Holy Spirit already showed me. And all I could do was just sit there and I'm like, God, the, the, the people that they are about to pray over. And when I say pray, I mean P-R-E-Y. The people that they are about to pray over, the souls they are about to pray over, they literally go to churches and rape people of their finances, rape people of their, of their um, destiny. Three days of this revival, and then after those three days of revival, your business gone down, your health is deteriorating, your, 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 your mind is just going one way, your body acting funny, your career is just going in shambles, your children acting stupid. Why? Because you coming into agreement with these foolishness. Somebody messaged me the other day, woman of God, um, if you're going to a church but you're not a part of the rituals, is that okay? Man, listen, the mere fact that you are going there, you're coming into agreement with the foolishness. Yes, and I said foolishness. Plenty of people don't like me and I really do not care. Plenty of people go to the witch doctors for me, man. If y'all could have killed me, y'all would have do it by then, by now. But I serve an ultimate father. I serve an ultimate father. One that is all knowing. That is all seeing. One that is everywhere and anywhere at the same time. And so don't think when you sneak into the voodoo priest in the middle of the night pastor. That God do not see you. Because God ain't um, wipe you off the face of the planet yet. Does not mean that God ain't see you. As a pastor, how is it that a member comes to you and they say, man, I had a dream of so-and-so inside of the church, but yet the same person they had the dream of, you let that same person come upon the pulpit and preach. You know this person do, um, um, dealing with a spirit of fornication. You know this person dealing with a spirit of, of, of adultery. You know this person keeping sweetheart and, 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 and cheating on their wives, cheating on their husband, but you still letting them preach on the pulpit. That means, pastor, you just as bad as the person you let preach. As a matter of fact, they probably that way because you're that way. Because whatever is happening in the church first is taking place at, in, in the head. It's happening with the head. Whenever you go to a church and you see all the little boys them acting like little girls, and all the little girls acting like little boys, look at the pastor. Look, look at the leader. And see, yeah, they ain't gonna like this message. Yeah, they, they ain't gonna like this. Somebody come on and share this broadcast. They, cause they can get mad, and it really ain't. You know, they can get mad all they want. That's that's their prerogative. Come on, man, stop sending your sons to this place. You don't go to church on Sundays, but you sending your son to this um church every Saturday, every Sunday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, father. Um, 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 priest, deacon, coming to pick up your son every day to get him to church, and you ain't set foot in this church yet. And you okay with this? Your son coming home with tennis and basketball and new shirt and new clothes and all this thing there, but you ain't asking your son where all these things coming from and why. Come on, it's time to wake up, people of God. It's time to wake up. We run for prophecy. We run for a feel-good message. We run for all these things, but we refuse to acknowledge the things that we are coming, coming in covenant with. You can't fully blame the pastor who, who, who allowing the witch or the warlock to come and preach. You got to look at yourself. Hey, Prophet Clyde, how are you? You got to take a good look at yourself. What is it that you are allowing? What is it that you sitting up under? What is it that you coming in covenant with? It is always my belief that if the head is flourishing, I should be flourishing too. What is ever, whatever is flowing from the head, it got to flow down to the skirt. 
If my, my pastor driving a nice car, I should be driving a nice car too. Because whatever blessing is on you, it should be flowing down to the skirt. Whatever blessing is on you should be flowing down from the skirt. I can remember one time ago, I think about two years ago, when I um, really began um, ministry, um, the Lord began to say to me, because, you know, one or two, and it wasn't even that much, one or two persons will say, woman of God, I just want to sow this little couple of dollars in your life. And it was far in between. I tell, um, let me tell you now, it was far and in between. And, 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 one, and, and the Lord said to me, he says, whenever I send someone, to be a blessing to you. He says, I don't only want you to speak a blessing into their life. He says, but I want you to speak a multiplied blessings into their lives. And so you may find one or two persons that might say, woman of God, I want to be a blessing to your ministry or I want to be a blessing to you. I will pray a prayer that may the Lord multiply your seed. Not double, not triple, not quadruple, multiply your seed. Why? Because what God said to me is whatever is on you is what whoever is following you, whoever is um, with you, that's the same thing that will flow from you. It will, it, it will automatically flow. And so if I doing foolishness and you coming into agreement with that, sooner or later you're doing the same foolishness. Have you ever seen when you're in a relationship with somebody, especially a sexual relationship, man, you was a good girl, you was a good boy, never used to do foolishness. But the mere fact that you start sleeping with this fella, you never knew that this fella done dealt with a, 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 a prostitute. He done dealt with a liar. He done dealt with somebody who, who is confused sexually with their body. He done deal with somebody who is um, uh, probably a murderer. He done deal with somebody who probably um, steals. And so now he done deal with all of these people. Or the woman done deal with all of these men. With all of these characters. Somebody who's sexually confused. They're not sure if they want man or woman, cat or dog. And then now you... For you, you come now and you start sleeping with this man or this woman. You know what happened? All of those spirits from all of those other people that they dealt with is now transferred to you. And so now not only are you dealing with your crap, you got to deal with every last thing that he dealt with. And so now you're taking on his spirit and all the other spirits of the persons that he slept with plus your foolishness. And so you in this ring now trying to fight and you defeat it. And you're trying to figure out, man, why all of a sudden I'm a woman, but yet I'm looking at a woman and having sexual desire for a woman. Why is it that I'm a man and all of a sudden I'm looking at a man and I'm attracted to a man? Did you check who you sleep with? Did you check who you come into agreement with? And so I am, I am man, listen. I, I, I think till the day that I go to my grave, I will be sick and tired and I will preach this from the mountaintop. I don't care who is afraid. I don't care who is upset. I don't care who don't like me. Listen, stop going to these organizations that are not of God. Stop. Stop going to these houses of Ichabod. The Holy Spirit is no longer there. If you can see a pastor sleeping, a male pastor sleeping with little boys, or a male pastor and his sweetheart on one row and his wife on one row, everybody I'm, I'm competing to see who could be the tied up, the most tied up, and who could wear the fanciest hat. Listen, why are you still there? Why are you still there? Hey, Canada, how are you? Why are you still there? All the sweetheart children, the white children, everybody children look alike. Why are you there? The praise team leader pants tighter than, 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 than the people them in Hollywood. He got more wine than you and your daughter. But oh, he could sing. Oh, I felt the spirit when he sang. Yeah, you felt the spirit all right. But it wasn't the spirit of God that you felt. You felt the spirit. But it wasn't the spirit of God, I can tell you that. Because the spirit of God doesn't live or, or, or wallow in filth. It's time now for us to get out of this thing now where we, we, we become little piglets and we wallow in filth. Any pig, only pigs I know like to wallow in mud and filth.
filthy altars, altars, filthy, filthy pulpits. Because these big time witches and warlocks, I tell you, I, I, I was in this church serving for years and God began to show me, I was so hurt and this and that, and, and, and God began to show me this person in all black with a hat, a sticky black hat that witches wear. I say, God, what this is you showing me? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. I'm like, God, I, 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 I just, yeah, I couldn't bring myself to under, I was like, God, what is this? I had to run for my life, literally run for my life. God had to take me out of Grand Bahama to save my life. And then you all have the audacity to look at me and say, who in the world she thinks she is? Who in the world she thinks she prophesying to? Who in the world she thinks she preaching to? Man, listen, I've been through it. And I know I have some more crap to go through. Because for this gospel that people think is so, um, 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 this gift that people think is so, you know, shiny and, and, and so, whoo, amazing. Who you pay for it? You pay for this. And so many of them, they will try to kill you before you walk into your destiny. They try to smother you. They try to kill you. They try to suffocate you before you have the opportunity or the chance to walk into your destiny. Listen, I was a small little tiny man. Listen, I was an insect. I didn't know who, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Every time I went to church, I, I left church with a major headache. Major headache. Every single time. Every time the church door open, I'm there if I'm not to work. Sometimes I'm to work and church there. I can't even keep my mind on work because I won't be in church. Something got to be wrong with that picture. I am at work. Somebody come on, share this broadcast. But my mind is on, on that church. I won't be in the church. I won't, uh, listen, I can't even function. Something got to be wrong with that picture, man. Let me turn up my AC. It's getting hot in here. Excuse me. My apologies. I had to turn up the AC. And so, people of God, we have to get to the point now where we start following these false prophets, man. And the thing about it is what is so um, perplexing, what is so puzzling is that God didn't show you. Yahweh didn't show you. He already showed you in a dream. He already showed you in a vision. He showed you these people, but you are still there. And so what you're saying to God, God, I know what you're saying to me. I, I, I see, I see the dream. I know what you're saying to me, but I respect my pastor a little bit more than you. That's what you're saying. I respect my pastor a little bit more than you. I said to somebody the other day, I said, you serve your father, the devil. I serve my father, the, the, um, the Lord. And they got so upset. Why are you getting upset? Because it's just the truth. If you are not serving God, then who are you serving? There's no in-between. If there's some other little thing in between, you need to let me know. Or wherever they say that in the Bible, you need to come and bring that Bible to me and let me know. Because obviously there's, you, you, you feel like there's something else. If you ain't serving God, then who are you serving? And many of these leaders, they are not serving God. They are not serving Yahweh. They are not serving Jehovah. They've already been um, um, given to a reprobate mind. And so they are teaching doctrines of devils. They are led by seducing spirits. They've already been seduced. And so now they're teaching these things and they're thinking this real. They're thinking that they are right. How do you recognize if you are dealing with a false prophet? How can you recognize if you are dealing with a false prophet? I want to give you um, some ways that you can recognize if you're dealing with a false prophet. Or if you're dealing with, you know, somebody that's shady, call themselves a pastor, but, you know, they're doing some strange things.
You could always recognize a false prophet because they always teaching about prosperity. Everything is money, 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 money. Car, husband, cat, goat, um, um, dog, the white picket fence, castle, uh, a uh, Ferrari, BMW, that's all they preach on. That's all they preach on. A false prophet, you will always know them because the only thing that they preach on is prosperity. Is prosperity of the devil? Prosperity is not of the devil. God wants you to prosper even as your soul prosper. But when you make that your idol, when you make that most important, when you put them um, um, being prosperous above God, then it becomes a sin. And so you find many pastors, they put prosperity above God. Hey, listen, you don't have to go to God to be successful. You just have to reach a level of, of, of success and become, you know, um, successful. And you are straight. You good. You could go to heaven because you're prosperous. The devil is a liar. Everything is prosperity. False teachers, false prophets, they would, they would lead their congregation to believe that in order for you to be happy, you got to be wealthy. In order to be happy, you got to have material possessions. In order for your soul to, 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 to be happy, you got to have material possessions. You have some churches, you can't be a part of the, the, so you can't be a member or a part of that organization unless you can give a minimum of a thousand dollars every Sunday. You can't. You have some churches that have ATM machines in the hallway. Credit card machines. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what we call church these days. This is what we call in church these days. And guess what? The people eating it up like it's sugar. They eat it up like it's sugar. It tastes good to them. It feels good to them. Their, 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 their flesh is pleased. They happy and content with that. Because the fella that I'm, I'm giving my $1,000 to every Sunday, he can never come to me and tell me stop sweet that sweetheart. He can never come to me and tell me stop hitting my wife. In Mark 10 and 25, it says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This basically dealing with your pride. You successful now. You, you got all this money now. You full of pride. Who can talk to you? Who can correct you? You feel like I could throw $1,000 at this pastor, throw $1,000 at this prophet, and, and that's me. I'm good. I, I could slide into heaven. I could pimp my way into heaven. The devil is a liar. It's time for us to get up and get out of Ichabod. These places, their altars are filthy. The pulpits are filthy. The hands of the leader is holy. And I mean H-O-L-Y. Holy. Bloody. Number two, false prophets refuse to, to, to speak on my apologies. Number two, false prophets refuse to call or to speak on sin. <clears throat> All those witches and those warlocks on the pulpit, oh, they could preach a, a wonderful sermon. Or oh, they even go to the Bible. One or two of them will go to the Bible, but some of them, they go to YouTube. And they get a lovely sermon. And they bring that to you every Sunday. They sell you this lovely sermon every Sunday. Every Saturday. But they will not talk about your sin. They wouldn't stop telling you about sleeping with your um 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 with the members. They wouldn't stop, they wouldn't preach about you who in there you're a um 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 you're a piano player or you're one of the the the, the 
um, musicians and you sleep with all the girls in the church. Oh, they ain't talking about that. They ain't correcting that. Or their son going through all the girls in the church, have a couple children with different women in the church, but they ain't correcting their son. And this reminds me of Eli. Eli watched his sons do all kind of foolishness, sleep with the women in the church, and never corrected his sons. Didn't correct his sons. And so what it is that God did? God wiped them off the face of the planet. He warned them they didn't take heed, and so he wiped them off. And so many leaders today, they feel because God wiped them off the face of the planet that they still good. They believe that they are still in good standing. Not understand that they done dead. They, done, they are walking dead. The worst position to be in is to be working for an employer and not getting paid. You showing up to this place every day. You paying, you putting gas in your car every day. You ironing and purchasing clothes and you going to this place every day. You putting in your hours every day. And at the end of the day, at, at the end of the week, the boss saying, listen, I fire you from two weeks ago. Why are you still coming here? And so for many of these prophets, these prophetesses and these pastors and these teachers and these so-called men and women of God who leading people, the people of God astray, they can show up there to the gate and God can say, hey, 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 where you going? And they can be like, but God, I worked for you for 20 years. I worked for you for 50 years. And God can say, listen, I don't know you. I don't know you. You workers of iniquity, I don't know you. How sad to say that you worked for God for 55 years. And for God to say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Man, it's time. listen, people of God, stop allowing people to lead you to hell. Stop allowing people to lead you to a Christless hell. Pick up the Bible, read it for yourself, study for yourself. Go on Google, learn some things for yourself, man. Go and re do some research for yourself. Stop allowing people to come to you every Sunday morning and preach a feel-good sermon and, causing, and, and, and preaching you straight into hell. It feels good to go to an organization where somebody will not tell you to stop doing wrong. They will not tell you to stop sinning. They will, listen, they don't tell you none of that. As a matter of fact, they don't even have an altar call. You just go in there, you get a feel-good message, you jump up and down, you, you, you know, you, you do your all kind of foolishness, roll all over the ground, and then you get up and you go home. Right when you walk out the church door, the big F word, the big S word, and did you think pastor wife should wear that dress? As leaders, we need to stop standing in the way. Stop standing in the way of sinners. It's time now for us to get out of the way and allow the people of God to come in. Allow the people of God to come in. Stop standing there with your nose up in the air like you just arrived, like you already in heaven. You ain't reached nowhere yet. How is it that you can tell somebody, oh, um, 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 you, you, somebody come and tell you and say, hey, listen, I think I need deliverance. Hey, you, I don't believe in deliverance. <gasps> You're a pastor? And you don't believe people need to be delivered? Pastor, you need to go be delivered. You need to go and get some deliverance. You need to go and get saved for real. Then you can tell your members, oh, I don't believe in witchcraft. Oh, I don't believe in, in voodoo. I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. So why are you so called say you serving God and he's a spirit? You ain't never see him before. You have pastors that tell people they don't believe in these things. Let me give you, listen, this is the funny part. You will have leaders that tell their people, oh, God didn't tell you that. Oh, God, that dream was not of God. 
But you just preached last Sunday that God shows you dreams and visions. But yet when I come to you and I tell you what I dream, you can tell me, oh, that was not of God. Why? Because God just exposed you. Because God just exposed you. And all of a sudden, oh, now that's not of God. Now you want to call me Jezebel? Pastor, um, uh, I feel that, you know, the Lord is calling me to go into ministry. Um, I've been here for six years now. And so now I believe that God is calling me to ministry. Oh, how dare you come to pastor and tell pastor you about to leave ministry. Where? First thing they can say was, you ain't ready yet. You ain't ready yet. Sit down some more because you ain't ready yet. When I read in my Bible, I see where the Lord say the gifts are without repentance. When I read in my Bible, the Bible say that God, the Holy Spirit, God, God, Jehovah, Jireh, uh, uh, Jehovah, uh, 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 um, Yahweh is the one that give these gifts, these teachings as pastors, prophets, apostles, and so forth. It, 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 it's God. It didn't say um, pastor so-and-so up to the church down the road. And so, therefore, if you can't give me the gift of prophecy, you can't give me, and some of them, oh, Jesus, they tell you they can give you the gift of prophecy. And so, nowhere in my Bible I see where it say a man will give me this gift or this title. Nowhere in the Bible. And so when you come to pastor and you tell pastor that, listen, the Lord called me to go into ministry, the first thing they can tell you, you ain't ready yet. How would you know if I'm ready? The Holy Spirit tell me to go into ministry, but now you as the man can tell me I can go. I guess what we do, we sit down right there, another two years, three years, five years, not doing what God tell us to do, but we obeying what the pastor tell us to do. And you know what happened? You get sick in your body. Your children start acting stupid. Your boys in jail. Your girls going crazy. Everything in your body going haywire. And you sitting up in this church. Pastor, pray for me. But if you can get your, your backside out of those people organization and go on the road and do what God tell you to do, go to the hospital and pray for the people like God told you to do, go to the um, um, old folks home and help with the old folks. If you go to the children's home and help feed the children, if you go and do what God tell you to do, you will see that your body will be healed. You will see your finances begin to be free. You will listen. Nobody have to speak no, or, or, or speak no prosperity over you. Just be obedient. Just do what God tells you to do. Get out of these places of Ichabod's. Get out of these temples where the Holy Spirit don't even reside anymore. He don't even pass by the front door. There's no healing there. There's no Holy Spirit there. There's no truth there. Man, some of these places you go and you got to put on the whole armor of God. Because you guarantee it to catch something from out of that place. These days, you don't only catch STDs when you have sex with somebody, but you go into a church and you get something in there too. You gone in there one way and you coming out like mix up. You got more demons on you when you go to the church. You got you coming out with more demons than when you went in there. Man, listen. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It really hurts my heart. <laughs> And, 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 and you know what? I, it, 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 I stopped getting to the point where I allow this thing to affect me in this way. I, I stopped getting to the point where I'm like, these people can't see? You inviting this person to come and speak to your church? You can't see? You inviting that, that person to come and speak where? You all can't see? And then they, 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 they come to the church or they come to the island or they come to the country or the state and they have the gumption to start prophesying and, and talk about, oh, um, um, this one is this and that is that and that and that and nothing makes sense. Tell the pastor, oh, because of his faithfulness, um, God is about to bless him, but the man been cheated on his wife for 20 years. But you just, you come into the church prophesying that God say he can bless him because of his faithfulness. This fellow been cheating on his wife for 20 years. Man, you all better get it together. But we sit up underneath this. 
This is the garbage we sit up under. This is the filth we sit up under. And then we wonder why our lives are not changing. Mix up like Kong Salad Eddie. We wonder why our lives are not changing. We wondering why people in the church now more than ever dying from sicknesses, dying from d diseases, dying from HIV, dying from cancer, dying, just dying out of the church. Divorce is all time high in the church. You get more pastors that been married three times than you have um, 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 people in the world. You have people in the world, they get married once and they live together peacefully 25 years, 30 years, and 40 years. Married. Unsafe. Married. But pastor done been married three and four times. And I sitting up underneath that. Now, I can, I can, I can go with one. Because pastor might have got married before. He probably get saved and he probably went before God or, or before God spoke. Or she married before God spoke and made a mistake and so forth and all that. Even if you were saved, you just went because of your flesh. You went and you did some stuff and got married when God didn't tell you to go. And for some reason, some stuff happened and you, were, you, you, you got a divorce and so forth and all that. God is a forgiving God. Okay. You get married again. For Christ's sake, let it be this. Let, let, let God need you this time. Three, four, four times married. I know there's one. The first wife died. The second wife died. You think me as a woman, I going to go marry you. Your first wife died. The second one died. I going to go marry you. Oh, glory. Lord, let me get on Facebook Live. Wait. <laughs> Something got to be wrong with this picture. Can't open your eyes, people of God. Open your eyes. The first one gone. The second one gone. From the same type of disease. Man, so open your eyes, people of God. Open your eyes eyes in the spiritual realm stop relying on these people to show you to the holy spirit and find the holy spirit yourself go to the word of god for yourself stop going to these places with these filthy altars with these filthy pulpits filthy pulpits No man, this is Chantel, seriously. The first one died, second one died of the same disease, you know. You think I can now, you all watch those movies, <laughs> those action movies when they have in the fight scenes, and you see this one guy now, he fighting all these people. Must he put 10 people he fighting, and everybody just like they waiting their turn to fight this fella. Like instead of 10 of y'all fight this one fella so y'all could defeat him, everybody waiting for their chance now to get the, <laughs> to fight this fella. So you take now, I can be waiting. The first one done fight. The second one done fight. Me as the third person, I can still be standing there waiting for you to go and beat me. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I can't, people of God. I can't. Look at it, man. Open your eyes in the spiritual realm. Ask God to give you discernment. Ask God to, 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 to give you understanding, revelation. Ask God to open up your spiritual eyes. There are some crap going on in the spiritual realm. And the reason why you all going there like sheep to the floor, um, 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 slaughter is because you all can't see. Blind, can't see. And you know these, these people, they, they rejoice when they see you all coming because they know you all blind. And so they could tell you all anything. They could prophesy anything. They could tell you all, oh, go to the bank and get every penny out of the bank and come and sow it. Yeah, that, that's what they can tell you all. And you know what? You go to the bank and you do it for true. They could tell you all, oh, go and get a loan, a $20,000 loan, a $10,000 loan and come and sow it to the church. Yeah. Go to the bank and get a loan for a whole car and just give it. Now, listen, I'm not saying God ain't going to never tell you. You know, give you these type of instructions. But come on, you got to have a relationship with God for yourself. Hey, Prophet Randall, how are you doing, brother? You got to have a relationship with God for yourself. You know, the other, just the other day, God told me 
I saw um, um, something or a prophet posted something on Facebook and, and the Lord said, I want you to sow into that. And I said, okay, God. A few, a few, but a year or two ago, I would have said, the devil is a lie of me, my money. Oh, not me. But the Lord said, I need you to be a part of that. He didn't tell me to come into covenant. He said, I want you to sow into it. And so I went, I forgot about it, and the Holy Spirit reminded me. And so I ran to the bank, and I got the, 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 the finances, and I, I put it in the envelope, I wrote on it, and I prayed over it. And I called the person, I said, hey, where are you now? I need to put this in your hand right now. Right after I did that, somebody called me, and they say, woman of God, I have $600 I need to send to you right now. I say, say what? Where you come from? Who sent you? I ain't used to this. But my concern was in no finances. That was not my concern. My concern was I'm going to be obedient to what God tell me to do. I don't know what the, what, 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 the, what the servant of God needed to do, but I was obedient to the word of God. There were some times when I, never, I didn't even have it, and God said, go and do this. Sometimes I only could have given $5. Sometimes I only could have given $20. Plenty days I drive with my car on E. I had one little Nissan Tiana. That thing, man, listen, that car catch more hell. Because that used to drive on fumes plenty, plenty, plenty times. But that's when I was saying, okay, I got to be in this church. I got to be doing this. I got to this and I got to this. And I got to, I got to, I got to give them their tithes. And I got to give this and I got to do this. But yet my car was on E. And not once did they say, hey, we coming to bring you some grocery. Hey, um, how the children doing? Hey, let me yeah, take this, go and feed your children. Not once. Until the Holy Spirit say, look at it. And then I had to put two and two together. Is this making sense, Marvel? This making sense? And I had to realize, God, this ain't making no type of sense. And you, saw, you know what I sat doing? And people, ooh, pastors hate this. Instead of me taking my, my tithes and dropping it off by the church where there is not a storehouse, I go and if there's somebody on the road, I give that to them. If God tell me to sow into somebody, I sow into their lives. If, so, if God tell me to go and do this, I go and do that. If God say, hey, listen, you need a brand new camera to get this done, I go and I do that. If God say, listen, that sister over there need it, I go and I do that. That's, that's what I do. Right now, God is speaking to me reference to children. And, 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 and one of the things that I want to do is I want to, to, to put some packages together for children. That's what I do with it. I don't go and, and if somebody bless me, I don't go and say, oh, let me spend this. Let me go on my, on my trip. Let me go eat five course meals and this and that. Let me go and buy me some, some, some Remy and Prada and, 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 and all this thing there. No, I don't do that. I wait to hear the voice of God because the reason why that person was a blessing to me was for me to be a blessing to somebody else. And so I wait on God. For every time somebody bless me, I always wait on God. Unless God already told me specifically what those funds are for. The other day, I really needed to go to the States because I wanted to go and, and, and shop so I can get some things for the hurricane relief to go to Freeport to do a, 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 a giveaway. And guess what? A woman of God say, woman of God, I know you say you want to go to the States. Listen, I can get your ticket for you. Listen, I almost fall on the ground where I was so happy. I was rolling all over the ground. I know they thought I was crazy. God made a way, not Mava. God made a way, and I was able to go to the States, get some stuff. I gone, listen, but yeah, I took I took the monies, and I went to, to, to Freeport, and I did a giveaway, me, by myself. No no cameras, no Zen and S, no TV 12, none of that. I went to Freeport, and I drove around, and I did a giveaway. I didn't ask nobody for nothing. I didn't tell nobody nothing. I went myself, and I did what God told me to do. Did I say to somebody, oh, you better sow a seed or else, God? Did I go to anybody and say, oh, you better death? No, I didn't. 
Somebody call me all the way from Grenada, from the house of uh, um, um, assembly, and say, woman of God, I want to be a blessing to the people of, 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 of the Bahamas. I don't know these people, but the Spirit of God. You usually hear the young people say, real, recognize, real. You better believe it. Real, recognize, real. A true man and woman of God know a true woman or man of God. A true man or woman of God can see a foolish, see foolishness from a mile away and they will call it out. That's the reason why people don't like true prophets. Only like them false prophets who can come and tell you, oh, God can give you a house and a car. But all oh, those true prophets who can tell you, listen, judgment is here. You better get, repent. You better get it together. Get out that man bed. Get out that woman bed. Stop shocking up. All oh, these the prophets they don't like. As long as you can prophesy house and car, you are the best prophet ever. But the minute you start telling them, Oh, listen, get it together. Stop going to the witch doctor. Stop doing this. Stop trying to get this man, um, um, kill this woman for this man, for, for, for her husband. <laughs> Randall, <laughs> I can message you after I come off live. <laughs> listen. False prophets don't believe in Jesus. Jesus is the only way. And I know many of you, you've seen this throughout the world. Um, Oprah Winfrey. Why? Because he come into covenant with Oprah Winfrey. All them, they come in covenant with each other. So if I come in covenant with somebody who says that Jesus is not the only way to heaven, what you saying to me? You saying that you mean you believe in the same thing. But the minute he, Jake said he coming, um, um, he having a, a, a no more sheep conference, everybody gone. Woman thou act loose, everybody gone. They take every dollar out the bank and gone. But when something happened, they go to the little prophet up the road, down in the dark, in the middle of the night. Prophet, what you hearing? No, 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 no. Go to a woman thou act loose and, say, and ask them what God's saying over there. False prophet don't believe in... In heresy, I don't know, for some reason, my um, Wi-Fi keep on going in and out. Abraham! Abraham! Abe! They don't believe, um, um, they always want to talk about the contradictions of the scriptures of God. Always, they want to point you to contradictions. Go inside my room, see if the Wi-Fi, plug the Wi-Fi box in for me, please. One second, I still on live. Go and plug the Wi-Fi box and make sure it's charging. Give me a moment. I'm going to feed y'all. Go inside the room and be quiet, please. Shh. Okay, go. The Wi-Fi box is plug in. Plug it in for me, please. Sorry, talking to the kids. And so, people of God, we, 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 we have to wake up. And so, false prophets, they're always trying to find things that are inaccurate in the Bible. They're always trying to make, trying to find contradictions. Always. How you can tell a false prophet, a witch, a warlock? Always. How do you recognize a witch that is on the pulpit? They're always talking about witchcraft. Oh, somebody working witch on me. Oh, somebody do this. And oh, somebody do this. And oh, somebody do that. Yeah, you're talking about all the wickedness which you don't do to people. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. People, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up because you're going to a Christless hell. These people only leading you to a Christless hell. They can't save your soul. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Only Yeshua can do that. And so people of God, I want to come on in this afternoon just to speak to you for a few minutes because this thing been bothering me, man. When I tell you it's been bothering me, and, and I'm sure it's going to continue to bother me because people, just because you come on Facebook Live and you speak this word doesn't mean that people are going to take heed. So you will have people still going, uh, continue to go into these um, houses of Ichabod. They will continue to go to these places. And, and mind you, they know better, you know, but they continue to go to these places. 
And then when they get sick, they won't come look for you to pray the sickness off. Somebody messaged me, woman of God, um, I don't believe in those traditions and those rituals, but I still go to the church. Well, if you go into the church, you are already in agreement with what they're doing. If somebody call you and say, but listen, I'm going to kill a couple people tonight, you come in? So what you can do? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm going. No, you ain't going because you ain't coming into covenant with that. You don't agree with that. You don't agree with that lifestyle. So you ain't going. Matter of fact, you can call 911 and say these crazy people are about to go do some foolishness. You're not coming into agreement with that. So same thing, why are you going to a place that, 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 that worshiping a statue? Why are you going to a place that telling you, oh, you have to come to a man to confess sins? Why? Why I have to go and confess my sins to a man? Is he, did he died on the cross for me? Did he shed his blood for me? Oh, I don't believe in those rituals, but you're there every Sunday, every Saturday, every Wednesday, every Thursday. you there? Oh, I don't believe in rituals. Oh, but you just tell me you go into this church because your granddaddy been there, your grandmother been there, your um Grammy been there, um, 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 mother been there, your daddy been there. And so that's the reason why you still go in there. Oh, my mommy is a part of this church and I can't leave this church. Oh, my wife is a part of the church and I can't leave the church. My husband is a part of the church and I can't leave the church. <sighs> hey, don't, don't get me wrong now. Don't say prophetess say, oh, I must leave my husband church. No, hey, don't, don't go there. I did not say that. If you go into a church where you, where you see some stuff and your husband ain't see it or he does not want to leave, oh, you better go to God. Let God deal with it. And you pray the prayer and ask God to open his eyes that he may come uh, be, be awakened and see what's going on. Don't go talking about, oh, I leave in my husband. I go into my own church or I go and start my own church. Devil is a liar. You never ain't never say that. So don't say, Mama say, oh, um, I could go and leave my husband at this church and go. The devil is a liar. I never tell you that. Your husband go into Christ the King, woman, go, go. Go where your husband is. But in the meantime, you go and you pray to God. God, open his eyes. Open his eyes that he may be able to see. You do your fasting. You do your praying. You do what you got to do. Y'all got to understand y'all is going to marry these people and y'all know quite good and well what they was into before you marry them. And after you marry them, you won't come talk, but you won't change them. Oh, we can't go to this church no more. Listen, you know that fellow was a part of that church before you gone and marry him. You know that woman was a part of that church from before you gone and marry her. Don't come now because after you done marry, you think she can automatically say, oh, I ain't going to this church no more. Y'all better try out, get your priorities together. That's why it's so important to wait on God. Because God can point these things out to you. As a matter of fact, he's not even going to put you in a situation that is not of him. But because of our flesh, we can't wait on God. We jump into all kinds of situations that is not of God. Been there, done that. Because you refuse to wait on God, you won't go to the prophet. What you, what prophet, what you see? Prophet, pray for me. Prophet, pray for this cancer to go away. Prophet, I need healing in my body. Prophet, but what happened? You forget that you, the prophet's going to God. So you forget that you could go to God too? The same way God speaks to the prophet, you forget that God could speak to you too? Come on, man. Stop making these people gods. Stop making them lords. Yes, you honor the man, the true man and woman of God. Yes, you honor them. You respect them. But they are not Lord over your life. I am not Lord over no one's life. I never have been and never will be. And the minute you all see me start acting crazy, you all, listen, straighten me out real quick, eh? The minute you all see me start acting crazy, you all straighten me out real quick. You don't Lord over people. As a prophet, this is what I do. I point. This is what I do. I point. 
And the only reason why I can point is because I first hear it from God and I only echo what he says. Let, let them know, get this together. Let them know, get that together. Let them know, get this together. Let them know I am happy. Let them know I am happy with this. Let them know this. Let them know destruction is coming. Warn them, do this. I only do this. This is all I do as a prophet. I point. That's what prophets do. They're not gods. They're not Lord. We get to the point where we're so used to the manipulation, where we're so used to, 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 to these pastors talking to you any kind of way that it's just a norm. Pastors say, I gotta, I gotta tell him when I go and obey. Pastors say, um, 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 I can't sleep with my husband on Sunday nights. Pastors say, I mustn't, um, um, have oral sex. Pastors say, I mustn't do this like this. Pastors say, you must only have missionary style. Pastors say, oh, you can't wear thongs. Pastors say, let me get on Facebook Live, yeah? You go into your husband and you trying to figure out why your husband don't want to come to that church? Because you more married to your pastor than your husband? You more obedient to your pastor than your husband? Pastor say this and pastor say this and pastor say that man. Listen, you might as well pack your stuff and go by pastor. How do pastor start dictating your bedroom? How? Male or female pastor? How they get dictating? your bedroom or to your marriage how i was saying to someone the other day i think it was one of my co-workers i was having a conversation with about two or three of my co-workers and i said to them as a pastor if a woman or a man is coming always coming to my meetings and i know that person is married you've been coming for a whole straight week or a whole straight month and i never see your spouse i come into you hey what happened um, to your husband? Where, where's your wife? How's everything? What's going on at home? And then I'm going to grab my spouse and me and my spouse going to find your spouse and we will all have a meeting. You come into church seven days a week. I can say, hey, go home to your husband. Go home to your wife. Go and find them. Me and my husband, we come in to look for y'all after church. Oh, but the pastor seen doing that these days. This woman in church, seven days. A, as a matter of fact, she there eight days a week. You know, you know, eight. Every time the church door opens, she in church. Where's her husband? Where at the bar? And you as the pastor ain't never going to look for him? Never? Something got to be wrong with that picture. You can be calling this woman every day on her cell phone, texting her on her cell phone every day. You need this and you need that. She cooking in her husband's house and bringing food to you every day. And you don't see something wrong with that? Or a single woman in the church, she cooking every day to bring to the pastor? Hey, okay. I gone for real this time. For real, for real. I repent of my lie and I go on for real this time. Come on, people, we need to get it together. All this filth, this is what we've been taught. This is what we've been taught, you know. We've been taught it's okay. We've been taught this thing. And the minute you speak against it, oh, pastor, big sermon on, in, in, on the pulpit. Some people in here speaking to some other people and telling them, that they're not supposed to cook for me anymore. But the devil is a liar. Yeah, the devil is a liar. Because ain't nobody need to cook for you. If you was a single man or single woman, go and find your own food. That's what most of them trying to do right here. <laughs> that woman looking for one husband. And she want a pasta. <laughs> Jesus. So people of God, I wanted to come on in and I wanted to speak with you just for a while reference to this man because it's it's some stuff going on in some pulpits. You'll be surprised. Somebody called me right after the hurricane and they say, woman of God, said while we was cleaning out the pulpit, we find all kind of things underneath the pulpit. 
all kind of witchcraft paraphernalia under the pulpit. Yeah, there's the pulpit, you know, in the church. And wondering why her, honey, her, why her husband was acting funny towards her, was acting, why, acting um, um, I'm wondering why, you know, her husband listened more to the members than he would listen to her. All the witchcraft right there in the altar, right there. So now the women them that he food feeding him and all of them who bringing him something to drink and all his pastor, I bring you a soda. Pastor, I bring you some coffee. Pastor, I brought you some chicken. Pastor, I brought you some turkey and ham. And he's sitting there and eating that. But yet he can't see you or hear you no more as the wife. He can't hear you. He can't see you. All he can see is the young lady in the church who bringing him the food. And then sooner or later, he divorced the wife and he married the same one who was bringing him the food. Listen, I gone. Or he married the armor bearer. Um, listen, filthy altars and pulpits. Filthy altars and pulpits. It's time now for us to turn to God and hear from the Holy Spirit. It's time for us now to turn to Yahweh. It's time now for us to hear from God. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get the belt. Yeah, I'm going to get the belt. It's time now for us to get to Yahweh and hear from God. These are serious times, Monica, serious times we are living in. And guess what? I give you the scriptures. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure to sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables, lies. That's what they want here. They want here a feel-good feel message. They want here, yes, you're doing good. They want here, okay, yeah, you could shack up, but God will make it okay. God can fix it. Yeah, you could go and get your, um, 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 you can lie a little bit. You could steal a little bit. Come on, God will forgive you. That's the messages they want here today. First Timothy chapter four, it says, now the, the, the spirit speak, speaketh expressly that in the latter, at latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Why I can't I say this word today? Having their conscience said with a hot iron. And so, people of God, I've given you what God has given me. I'm about to go and cook some food for these children because they're going crazy now. Blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. Those that are watching on um, my YouTube channel, thank you for coming on in. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. I appreciate you for subscribing. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube page, go ahead and find it. You can type in Marvel Lewis, M-A-R-V-A-L-O-U-I-S. M-A-R-V-A-L-O-U-I-S and find me on YouTube. Subscribe to the page. Don't forget to click on that bell so that you will be um, notified each time that I download a video or I can come on the live feed. For those of you following me on Facebook, stay tuned to my Walking Into Destiny live page where I will always be coming to you live whenever the Holy Spirit tells me to come on in. Um, look forward to some things that are going to be coming up and then I'm looking for God to do some amazing things in 2020. There's also a fast that will be coming up um, pretty soon going into uh, the early part of 2020. I will be notifying you of that also. If you want to take part in that, I will also be giving you some information reference that we had a very successful um, fast in September. We had a very successful 21 day fast. Man, listen, there were things, I mean, God, even still, even now, some things are materializing reference to that fast and so listen it was it was awesome man that was a time you know that was a time and so there's going to be another fast i'm not sure if it's going to be 21 days fast as yet but i know the holy spirit is beginning to speak to me reference to a fast and he said said um, um on um in january the beginning of the year and so we'll be hitting uh the first part of the year with a fast beginning or kicking off the year um, 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 cleansing our spirits and recommitting ourselves um, to God. And so thank you for coming on in. I really appreciate you, um, YouTube viewers, Facebook viewers. I appreciate you. Love you for watching. Go ahead and have a blessed
evening, night. Um, what is it? For those of you that share um, the broadcast, may God bless you in a special room. May he open up the windows, the doors of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you do not have room to contain. For those of you that message me every now and then and you ask how you may be a blessing, somebody called me, I think um, from the United States today, I wasn't able to catch the call. I was laying down um, and they were asking how could they be a blessing to the ministry because they went through my website. The PayPal information that I have on my website um, that is no longer in service. And so if you go to my website and it takes you to that PayPal information, you will not get anywhere because that, if that PayPal, um, um, has been closed. And so for anyone that does web sites, if you want to be of assistance to me, if you, um, um, are, you know, you do, um, um, web pages, please give me a call because I need to probably revamp that a little bit. And I have no idea what to do because I need to change the PayPal information. And there's some things that I need to add on there. I wanted to have a blog where I can be interactive with persons that come on the website where I can post first, um, sp inspirational, um, quotes and so forth on that website. And so I need to be revamped a little bit. And so thank you so very much for tuning in. Oh, the message, the information for the website is www.walkingintodestinyministries.com. Amen. Um, www.walkingintodestinyministries.com. Um, but the uh, PayPal information, it is uh, paypal.me slash walking into destiny. Amen. And so if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, I'll put all of the information in the comments. Um, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, thank you so much for coming on in. And I hope that this discussion today was a blessing to you. I hope that it was an eye opener. I hope that, you know, um, you begin to see things differently and you begin to go now to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, allow the Holy Spirit um, to reveal some truths to you. For some of you, the Holy Spirit has been revealing some things to you, but you refuse to just, you know, move or act based on what it is that he's saying to you because you're still second guessing. Listen, if the Holy Spirit doesn't show you that this is not a man of God, not a woman of God, listen, do yourself a favor, the ultimate favor, and get out of there. You will not flourish in a place where the Holy Spirit is not. You will not flourish anywhere the Holy Spirit isn't. And so if the Holy Spirit isn't there, there's no peace, there's no joy, there's no liberty. And so people of God, blessings. Like I said, thank you for coming on in again. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord cover you. May he protect you. And even as you go to your beds tonight, for those of you that are different parts of the world and you're just about getting up, <laughs> may the Lord continue to bless you. May you have a fruitful day. And for those that are going to bed, may God bless you and watch over you as you go to bed tonight. May God cover your children, your finances, your homes, your vehicles, your businesses, your jobs, wherever you find yourself going. May the Lord bless you and watch over you and protect you. I come against retaliation and backlash. Everything that is not of God. I command it to be canceled and broken right now in the name of Jesus. And I cover you under the blood of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody come on and magnify the Lord with me as we leave this live feed today. The Lord is great. He is worthy to be praised. There is no one else like our God. There is no one else like Yahweh. It's 3 p.m. in Cali. Wow. <laughs> it's 3 p.m. in Cali. And so, listen, it's 6.09 here in the Bahamas. And so you, you got to understand the time difference. And that's why so many people, um, 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 they probably would listen to the broadcast. To me, it looked like 3 o'clock in the morning. But to them, it may be a different time. And so, um, yeah, man, um, the different time zones is just amazing. Because I have people in the Netherlands. I have people in Washington. People in, listen, Canada. I have people watching, viewing from everywhere, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in. I'm so grateful for you coming on in. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, and I'm thankful for those of you that email me. You can always email me at prophetessmarvelous at gmail.com. Go ahead. You can shoot me an email. You can message me on Messenger, and I'm always there to answer your call once I'm available. Most of the time, I'm not because I'm at work. <laughs> and so I may not be able to have a conversation with you, but once you send me a message, I'll be able to shoot you a message right quick. So blessings to all of you. Have a pleasant evening or a pleasant morning and a pleasant good night. Thank you so very much.
Love you for watching.